Hi everyone, this is Nikki with Design Like a Pro and welcome to part two of our magazine cover design here. We're going to talk headlines. Now this is the placement of the font that you choose that's going to get readers to look inside your magazine. We've already placed our image, but now it's time to draw them in further with some headlines. The number one thing about headlines on magazine covers is the hierarchy. The font choice, the color choice, and the size of your headlines. That is key to creating a dynamic cover that's going to bring that audience to look inside. So let's get started placing. One thing to keep in mind on this tutorial, I'm not going to go in great detail of the actual technique of using the tools in Photoshop. So hopefully you have a basic understanding of the text tool. That's the main tool we're going to use today. But this is going to be geared more towards a problem solution. When it comes to magazine cover design, a lot of it is a puzzle that you're putting the pieces together based on your image. So your image isn't going to be exactly like this. So hopefully I can leave you with some tools that will allow you to follow along in your own situation so that you can really see how to place this text based on the problems that you're going to run across on your image. So if we're going to place our first headline text here, we're going to grab our text tool and I'm just going to start typing out uh, first headline. All right. So based on our problem solution here, we're going to go on the premise that this is our first and our main headline that's going to draw our readers in. It's pretty much what our magazine is about is this first headline. So let's go ahead and select this first headline and let's pick a color for it so it pops off. The first thing that happened is it's white. Well, that's not going to do much. You can't see it. So we need a different color. Immediately, I might start to pull colors from my image to see what works. But that's pretty neutral. If that's what you're going for, that's okay. But I think we're going to need a brighter color. So if the neutral color or the colors in your image aren't working to pop that headline off, then the next option is to go a completely alternate way and pick a bright color that is not part of your image to see what happens there. Now because we have a white background, the key is that we want a fairly dark color, but it can still be a bright color that pops off the page here. Okay, so this kind of magenta color is interesting. I kind of like that. All right, color choice is key here. Your audience, if, if, they're, if they're mostly female, you can go with pinks. If it's a male audience, I don't think you want to go with pink. But keep that in mind. We're going to go with pink here just because it's a nice bright color that pops off. So size is, is something to consider because you can have it really large to where it intersects this image. So if we want like 50, wow, okay, that's big, but it also covers her face. Uh, I don't think we want to cover her face. So that's something to consider when you're deciding on your, your font size is how much of that image do I want to sacrifice and cover up. And my thought is we don't want to cover that up. So our first headline is going to reside right there. It's easy to see. It pops off the page. Why? Because most of the image is actually neutral. So you see that first headline text right away. Secondary text. Okay, we have our big bold headline. We do not want a big bold secondary text. This is where that hierarchy comes into play. So when we place our secondary text, We want to change a couple of things. We want to change the font and we want to change the color. Immediately, I'm going to go with a darker color here, something that complements our pink, but also complements the image as a whole. And this charcoal color does that. But we don't want to stop here. Why? Because now my eye doesn't know which one to look at. So we want to vary that font size. We want to decrease that down a little bit. But before we settle on a font size, I also want to change the font itself. So let's go with a nice garment, maybe. Uh, when I have a big, bold sans serif font, the secondary text, I prefer to have a serif font. And if we do that, make sure that's back down to zero, we can bump this up 
a little bit in size so that we can see it. All right. So now we have a nice visual hierarchy going on here. We have a very big and bold headline and our secondary text is still visible, readable, but it's not the first thing that grabs our attention. All right, so now we have our first headline. So I'm gonna show you how to place another headline and give you another option to make your text pop off. All right, so we're gonna type our second headline. All right, and I want that to go back to our first headline font. And we do not want it to be the same size. We don't want it to be the same size as our first headline. We want to create a hierarchy here. Because it's all caps, I'm going to put some space here so it's easier to read. And I'm going to bump this down to 20. Okay. So now we have a secondary headline here. This still pops off, and then we have a secondary headline. And then again, we're going to do more text. And then I'm going to do this several times so that you can see what happens when you have a couple of lines of text. All right, again, we do not want it to be the same font. But I am a fan of keeping things simple. And if you choose a big font, you can stick with that for your headlines. But then you also can do the same thing for your secondary text. All right, so then this can be a little bit smaller. OK, drag this in. OK. So now we have a secondary headline. That looks really nice. We can see it. That's something that you can leave. What you can do here is bring this font color back to pink. That's okay if you want to do it that way because you have this considerably smaller than this. So you're still getting a visual hierarchy. If you want, you can do a different color. Maybe do black, maybe do brown. This one I'm kind of sticking with um, the colors in our image. So we do have a bright font here. We don't want to go with a sec another bright font. That might be too much. All right, so if we stick with just a kind of a bold black, that's an option. As you can see, I'm sticking to this side because if I quickly select this text and bring it over, first of all, we can't see it, but I'm not a fan of covering up our image. There's a lot of magazine covers that do that, and that's fine, but I really like to leave this image alone and just place the text in a way that complements that image. So one more thing that I'm going to show you that can bring your headlines bring your headlines to life is to add a colored box behind your text. That's one option that you can use here. And what I would do is create a new layer, drag it below your text here, grab your marquee tool, and drag a box. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge because if you remember from tutorial, the first part, this is going to be trimmed away. So we want to make sure this goes all the way to the edge. Now we have this pink color. Let's pick up this color, this nice pink color here for our background. Oh, wait a sec. The eyedropper, make sure that we have that selected and okay. And now we show up as the background and then hit control backspace on your layer to fill it in. All right, and now I'm going to deselect and I'm going to bring these in. I hit control T to transform. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit. Make sure you got some space. Okay. And that's fine. Uh, one thing though is it's really hard to see this text. So we want to bump up that contrast. And in order to do that, we're going to make this white. You can leave that black because that does bounce off, but I'm actually going to make that white as well. All right. Now the fun thing with boxes that are colored is you now have the ability to drag them around pretty much anywhere you want to around your image because you can see that text. Wherever you drag it, you can see it. So it's up to you if you like it to cover her up or not, or if you like to leave it over here where it's a little bit safer and not covering up a big chunk of this image. 
One thing that I don't know if I'd want to leave this all left justified like this, so I might actually extend, if I kept it over here, I might consider cropping into her elbow, moving this text over here, and instead of left justifying this text, I'm going to right justify this text just to create another visual difference in what we have from this headline to this headline. Now one thing to consider, now that we have this bright box around this text, this might actually be our main headline and this might actually be a secondary headline. It's all based on what I visually see first and what I wanna jump off the page. And that's a quick look at some options for you when you're placing your text. Remember that you wanna use some colors to make this pop. You want to have a bright, bold headline, followed by a not-so-bold, smaller version for your subtext. And then when you create that secondary headline, it needs to be smaller still. It can still be the same font choice. You can change the colors, but you're going to make it smaller so that in the end, you're creating a visual hierarchy of the fonts that you choose and the placement of your headlines. There's no right or wrong answer here, but you'll see that if you just look at it visually, you can kind of see how these things pop off, how you want to place your text over your image, and in the end, it just creates a visual interest for your reader, makes you want to open up a magazine and look further into it. So I thank you guys for watching. Leave comments below. I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. If I didn't cover it in this tutorial, leave a question and I might be able to cover it in an upcoming episode or at least answer it in the comments. Be sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date with the latest videos that we release here on Design Like a Pro. And you can always email ideas for upcoming episodes to ideas at NikkiHeart.com. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.